morning, my name is Russell Galanti and I'm here with the follow-up pruning demonstration that we're doing. It is April 17th, 2020. We are at about eight weeks or two months after our initial rejuvenative pruning here at the Waimanalo Research Station Organic Ulu Orchard. What we're doing here today is we're gonna go through the follow-up pruning that we need to do on the new flushed growth. So we prune these trees back pretty hard. Uh, most of them have been cut back a half to a third. And what we need to do is get in here and take care of the new flushes. We can go ahead and take a look at some of these trees to have a comparison between what the prunings we did and some of the trees that we left unpruned. So let's walk back to the back corner and take a look at that. So what we've got behind us is a good example of the pruning that we did on February 22nd. For those of you that were here, we're just showing an example of the difference so that you have a reminder. And for those that are watching the video that were not at the February 22nd pruning workshop, you can get an idea of what these prunings looked like compared to what the trees were at before. Of course, this is with the addition of two months of growth on the tree on the right. You can see it's a pretty heavy cut what we did. And this is gonna be the type of cut that you wanna do for trees like breadfruit. These tend to be trees with characteristics like softwood, uh, adventitious buds, and respond well to heavy prunings by flushing out with these adventitious buds. We can actually take a look closer at some of these branches to give you an idea of what these buds are looking like. So you like. can see the points where the latent meristem will come out of these trees. They're marked by this leaf scar. That's the leftover remnant of where the leaf petiole is attached to the branch or was attached to the branch. Uh, the bud scales are usually the visible part of the dormant bud. You can see one of those budding out right here. These buds are preformed structures that will sprout when conditions are right or in response to damage like our pruning. From an evolutionary perspective, this was usually herbivory or abiotic damage like a windstorm or another tree uh, falling and damaging this tree. Uh, trees have sophisticated responses to external disturbances like pruned growth. In the case of this branch, we have dormant buds about here, along here, and sprouted buds. In terms of breadfruit, there is not a good model for which dormant stems will sprout after a pruning. We do have an idea of what will happen though based on observing previous responses anecdotally and from pruning work done by previous researchers. For any tree that you're pruning, you should research what work has been done to understand how they may respond and keeping your own records of trees that you prune will help you gain a better understanding of your unique growing situation. Because trees also will be responding to microclimate factors at your specific property. Breadfruit is known to respond to pruning by flushing heavily. And apical dominance is not a strong uh, in a pruning scenario like this. Many of the flush stems will be competing for resources, including space, sunlight, water, and nutrients. Selecting the correct stems to grow will determine the ultimate structure of the branch and the tree. Uh, factors that influence this will be the positioning of the sun, strong winds, other branches, and how many other stems are left flushing or growing on the branch and on the tree. So we're taking a look at one of the branches that we pruned back heavily. We left no apical dominance on this branch and you can see its response to that pruning was to flush out heavily. And this is very common for breadfruit uh, that are pruned heavily. Uh, you can compare it to this branch here or the branches above where we actually left some apical dominance. That is, we, we left stems uh, with a meristem at the tip of the branch. These branches have responded by flushing a little bit less vigorously. And this is one of the considerations to make when you're pruning these trees for rejuvenative pruning. You have to have an understanding of how your pruning cut is going to cause a response uh, from the tree. So we're trying to get these trees shaped for size management. 
We're also trying to shape them for aesthetics. Because this orchard is a learning orchard, it's one that's used and available to the public, so we wanna make sure that these trees are also an appealing shape. We're also trying to prune to maintain a certain level of shade for the ground plant species, as well as some of the chickens in this agro ecosystem. Other than that, we're trying to prune for production. We want to get production out of these trees and have as much fruit as possible. Breadfruit yield is tied to canopy width as well as canopy volume, as has been shown in some previous studies. Also, uh, diameter of your trunk can have an effect on that as well. So what we're really trying to do here is develop a wide canopy, but one that also has some volume. So what I'm gonna do here when considering what flush growth to leave and what to take is trying to choose growth that will help the plants widen their canopy, as well as filling in this growth to the best of our abilities. Breadfruit usually has co-dominant stems and trunks, as you can see with this tree's three co-dominant leaders. We want to try to limit too many of these. What we have is a more open canopy right now. We are not exactly pruning the trees for a V-shape, although that's the natural outcome from their existing structure and our pruning. We're going to try to promote a wide but filled in canopy. So I'm gonna select growth that will best fill in the spaces for each tree. We can go take a close up of how to remove the new flush growth, but first we should take a look at what we need. First off friends, you wanna have some sun protection. So I've got my trusty hat on. I'm not gonna show myself putting on sunscreen, but I do have it on. It's best to wear long sleeve clothes when you're out in the sun like this, as well as uh, jeans and boots. Make sure that safety is one of your first concerns. That being said, I also promote the use of gloves because first of all, you can damage yourself with uh, a sharp growth as well as the latex from the plant. Uh, you could have sensitivity to that. In terms of other tools, you can either use a scythe. A uh, small handheld scythe is a great way to remove fleshy growth like these new flushed uh, branches as well as bypass pruners. You wanna use specifically bypass pruners. And then other than that, for trees that are higher than, than you can reach, you would want to use an orchard ladder. Now these are the only ladders that are recommended for ground that is uneven and soft, like fruit orchards often are. Uh, we have a ladder that is comparable to an orchard ladder, but I would recommend using a three-legged orchard ladder for this type of situation. So this new flush growth is very easy to remove. You can actually remove it with just your hand by pulling the or, or pushing the growth uh, opposite of the direction that it's growing. So we've got this stem that's growing outwards uh, from the base of the tree. And all I need to do with my hand is grab it and rip it off. I can also use a pair of bypass pruners to cut the stem flush with the parent branch. I can also use a scythe We've got a serrated one here, but you can also use a non-serrated to simply cut flush to the branch. So I'm gonna walk you through how to prune one of these branches. What we've got here is a branch that's, that's lowest to the ground. We've pruned it back heavily. It's got no apical meristems uh, that were left over, so it's flushed heavily. The first thing I did was removed, was removed um, any budded meristems from the first three foot of the trunk itself because we don't want any branches growing too close that might become co-dominant trunks and also may cause issues from rubbing or crossing against other branches. Other than that, I wanna select growth that's about two feet apart. I don't wanna leave branches too close together. So what I'm gonna do here is I like this branch right here. I'll prune here. I want this, this stem to go out this way. I'm expecting that growth to occur. I've got a stem right here that I know is gonna grow and cross with this stem. So I'm gonna remove that and I'll remove his friend right here. Feeling a bit like Bob Ross right now. We've got a lot of flushed growth right up along here that I'm going to remove. So I don't want this. I don't want this. I will leave this with the expectation that it's gonna fill in growth right here. But because I'm leaving this, I wanna remove some of the growth that's around it so we don't have too much competition. I wanna to try to select stems that are either horizontal or vertical in terms of their orientation on the branch. Uh, in terms of stems that are budding from below, I wanna to try to remove those because oftentimes they won't grow correctly. They'll end up growing up and around other growth. 
Let's see here. I'm gonna remove you. Uh, we've got nothing, almost nothing budding except for the very tip of this branch. So I'm gonna leave this. I will remove all of this growth. And there's a few branches over here that you may or may not be able to see that I'm removing to give about two feet of growth, leaving only about two or three buds on this branch. So in the case of this one, I actually did leave a, a bud that is coming out from the bottom of the branch because I do expect that it's gonna grow straight out. We've got one more branch over here to prune. Again, removing this bottom, this bottom oriented, and then cleaning up this so that we don't have too much competing growth. Um, I like the way this is going, so I'll remove this friend here, 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 here. And I'm gonna leave these two to see what happens. So this is about what I would do. Oops, we've forgotten right here. This is a, actually a good, a good piece of advice to step back after you're done pruning to get a different perspective. And also you can walk away from the trees and come back and look at them for a second pruning after you've freshened your eyes on another tree or on your tasty breakfast or lunch. We're gonna finish this tree up quickly. I've left one stem right here. It's coming out this way, so I wanna fill in a space over on this side. So I'm gonna to try to remove some of this growth. All right, now we've got a fully pruned branch. Okay, right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do what we did to this branch to the rest of the tree. So hold on tight and try to keep up while I, while I prune the rest of this tree. 